seconds. Are there any? I call the member for Maitland. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I acknowledge the presence in the chamber today of the Shadow Minister for Transport and Roads, the Honourable Jody McKay, as I rise to address a number of major dangerous safety issues concerning the new roundabout on the New England Highway near Maitland Railway Station. And I'm concerned that this is going to cause a fatality in the new, near future. Since the opening of the flyover in the last year, I've received many complaints about the congestion and traffic problems that's been caused. But there are three main areas of concern. Firstly, the blacked out lane markings are fully opaque when driving west. One of my constituents, Mr Clint Brosey from Ashtonfield, has made a video on this and I urge people to look at my Facebook page. Another constituent said, I've noticed several cars nearly collide as it's hard to see where the lanes are for the current lanes and cars are swerving and driving in the outer lanes. RMS have said that they would review this to see if they can address it. Now, if RMS doesn't fix this, lives will be lost, plain and simple. This area already has issues with aquaplaning and with blacked out line markings also making it quite slippery in wet weather. There are similar issues with the white lines on the concrete on the eastern side of the highway where the overpass merges and it's unclear where the merge lanes go. Secondly, a constituent rang to inform me that steel plates were protruding from the road by approximately 100, 1,000 millimetres sorry, just after the roundabout, which he struck with his car going at the road limit of 60 kilometres an hour, causing his car to veer to the right. Now, 125 comments on, were posted on an online article about this within two hours of it going there, of people complaining and saying that they'd seen cars sliding in the wet on the plate, issues with motorbike riders nearly being thrown off their bikes, and damage to shock absorbers, etc. Now, the RMS advised me that this was part of roadworks that they'd put in place to reduce the um, aquaplaning with the installation of a culvert. But as another constituent who took, photo, uh, took videos of this hazard has said to me, uh, the lane with the steel plate in it should not have been open to traffic under any circumstances, and the blacked out lane markings are fully opaque when driving west. So it's a real problem. Again, it's utterly unacceptable for the RMS to be allowing work on a major highway in such a dangerous manage, man, manner. And thirdly, the Maitland Mercury has been scathing about the roundabout, and many of its readers have agreed. There's been an article which talked about westbound queues going um, up to 800 metres long during the afternoon peak hour, and we're very well aware of people using Maitland Park as a rat run to enjoy, uh, avoid the congestion. <coughs> RMS has told me it's too long to see an important improvement in the performance and that the peak periods are short. Well, one of my constituents has said they would like one of the engineers to just observe and perhaps get a drone's eye view of the roundabout from between 8.30 to 9.30 on weekends. It's out of hand, this constituent told me. They said it's become near complete chaos. It's becoming banked up on the actual roundabout and near misses are ridiculous. Traffic at 9am on Monday this week was banked up in all directions. In the afternoons from 3 to 4 it banks up from that roundabout back to the New England Highway to the east, causing a mad rush to try and bypass it by going flat out through the Maitland Park and Swimming Pool car park area. Even according to the Liberals, this is a problem. The East Maitland Liberal Party branch president and so-called independent councillor Bob Gagan has said, it's clear that there are unacceptable delays. Although the new overpass is not yet one year old, it has been long enough to see that this is an ongoing problem which is only likely to get worse. This roundabout has been a complete debacle, Mrs Acting Speaker. Everyone in the Maitland community has always known that a one-way roundabout overpass solution proposed during the term of the former Liberal member for Maitland would not work. Anyone with any sense could see that it was only a half-hearted solution. It's a waste of all the $45 million that was originally budgeted, but I note that the cost of the project blew out by $6 million and took another two years to complete. Now, I invited the Shadow Minister for Roads and Maritime and Freight to Maitland recently to see this roundabout and this dangerous intersection with me, as well as Testers Hollow, which I've also written to the Minister about. Ms McKay shares my very grave concerns regarding the high risk of fatality occurring at the Maitland roundabout. If someone dies at this roundabout, this will be on this government, and I am very serious about that. Today I have written to the Minister for uh, Roads, Maritime and Transport and asked her to come to Maitland at the earliest opportunity to see this situation, and I've asked for her urgent advice as to how the government proposes to fix this unmitigated disaster, which will likely cause a fatality in our community 
And I really would urge everyone, get online, look on my Facebook page and look at the impact of this road because it is terrible and it is an accident waiting to happen and the government needs to do something immediately. Thank you. Thank you, Member for Maitland. Always a